All right, we started recording. Hey, welcome everybody to the All Heat Team Call. Chris and I are really excited to be here, um, especially after the adventure we've had. For those of you who don't know who we are, we are 100 Club um, National Marketing Directors with the Juice Plus Company, and um, we have really had a trip of our lifetime, which has been made possible by our Juice Plus business. So we've been involved with the Juice Plus Company for 26 years. And um, I guess think the best part of it and really came home to me was the culture that our Juice Plus community has created. So it's helped us create not only a lifestyle for ourselves, but it's also helped us with, to help other people create a lifestyle. And um, I love our mission statement to inspire healthy living around the world and what that means, not only healthy in our bodies, but healthy in our mind, healthy in our spirit, healthy in our heart. And I think we felt that the last 22 days that we've been gone in the UK uh, and in Ireland. So first of all, um, this trip itself, I'm going to just start right in. Chris, do you have anything to say before I start? Yeah, go. Great. So this trip, this trip itself has been such a reminder on so many levels of what our Juice Plus culture. And sometimes people ask me, is this a cult? And I want to say yes, but it's a cult. Sure. You know, just extend that word cult. It's really about a culture. And it has given us so much. And we've been able to earn uh, the gift of this culture along the way and learn along the way. So a little bit of a quick side note is on September 19th, Chris and I left for Ireland. Ireland wasn't even on my bucket list. I went there because it was close to the UK. We were going to the UK for um, a Juice Plus conference. And we'd heard a lot of our friends had recently been to Ireland. And so I thought, well, let's just go. We, we keep hearing incredible things. So my suggestion is put Ireland on your bucket list. Sure. It is amazing. Um, the food is amazing. The people are amazing. The food is amazing. The landscape is amazing. The food is amazing. <laughs> the adventure, the castles, the forts, the food is amazing. Don't forget um, about the food. I mean, oh my gosh, Chris and I ate everything we never eat at every single meal. I, I just, I couldn't have a breakfast without ending it with a croissant. And the butter, the butter is creamy, almost like ice cream. So there was slathering of butter of all of our foods. We ate lamb and pork and, oh my yeah, gosh. Uh, I do want to say one thing as we were, the second or third day, we were mentioning to the waitress that uh, we just couldn't believe how great the food was. And she said, yes, I think it's because of our produce. And, uh, you know, of course, we're thinking, you know, that's what they grow in the garden. And she says, we, we produce our own butter, we produce our own cream, we produce our... I was going, oh, yeah, I think it is your produce. <laughs> it was just amazing, truly. And then one, one last piece I have to say is Chris uh, got us through the country without death. Because driving, not on the wrong side of the street, mind you, it's on the other side of the street. So when you go there, you never want to say to them, you know, we're driving on the wrong side. Driving on the other side of the street, the first night we only hit the curb four times, not right. bad, and on the left side. But really, going through the roundabouts and doing all the stuff, it's just crazy when you're so used to doing everything. So we had a system, just like we do for our business. If you agree upon a system, everything works so much better. So we agreed that every time we got to a corner, whether we were walking or driving, I looked left, he looked right, and we gave the okay sign that yes, it was okay to go. So instantly, you look right, I look left. So it really saved a lot. And then of course, every once in a while, not very often, Chris would make a turn and I'd have to say, get in the left lane, get in the left lane. <laughs> so, um, and then after Ireland, we went to the UK and we went directly to Hastings, which is where Heidi and Lloyd have lived and Lloyd's parents and Heidi's parents still live there. And we stayed at Lloyd's parents' house and really Hastings was starting to feel the true sense of the word of having an international business, not only to meet our distributors' family and be so welcomed by them, but Heidi and Pav and Louie put on an event and I have to give big kudos 
to Heidi because she did everything right, guiding Pav and Louie along the way of exactly how to set up for the event. Uh, Heidi found the event, and we had 40 people show up to the event. Um, between Heidi, Lloyd, and Pav, they had 36, and Chris and I actually had four guests show up. And one of the guests, I'm going to tell Chris, you tell how we met one of the guests that showed up. Uh, well, we did spend 12 hours in the L.A. airport on the way there. That was not the, the best start. But in that, as we were being shuffled around to find an a, a airline and a flight that was going to take us, we sat down to next somebody next to somebody who uh, <clears throat> had an English accent. And uh, we started talking. And within five minutes, uh, found out he was living close to Hastings. So Nikki invited him to come to our event. And... We were pretty surprised when he showed up. I had, I had texted him a couple times in between the event, checking to see if he was going to come or not. But really, our whole conversation was less than 15 minutes. From when I heard he lived within a half hour of Hastings, I said, this may be crazy. And you don't even know what we do. But we're having an event on health and lifestyle and fun and hope and inspiration. And I don't know, maybe you'd like to come. And he did. He showed up. And we're in a conversation. I'll send you some more information that looks like he uh, come on as a customer and even is considering uh, becoming a distributor and that was in a quick 15 minute conversation in the airport on the way to Ireland. Pretty crazy but you know you just have to remember to open your mouth and then even Chris uh, we were in Ireland about the first week and then Chris looked at me and said you know we haven't been very intentional on talking to people about our business and so as soon as he said that the next restaurant we were at we met an incredible server. Why are you laughing? Because she's so funny or it was restaurant to restaurant to restaurant, and uh, yeah, the, the only thing we were intent upon the first three days was eating, and then we said, well, we should probably talk to some of these servers, but anyway, go ahead. Anyway, so we talked to her. She, of course, gave us her email address. She's very excited about learning more. So um, that's kind of a, a little bit of the beforehand for Bournemouth, but then we rented a car and drove down to Bournemouth, and I, I just will just really quickly tell you that the really was not that much difference than our conference. Um, it felt a lot the same, the excitement, the loud music when you walk in. The one thing that they did that was really fun is they um, had different people carrying flags like, like the Olympics representing their country or countries. So everybody was already seated and then there was a main entrance way and then all of the UK NNDs, 39 clubs, 50 clubs, and 100 clubs came entering in like in the Olympics and were seated up front in gold-covered seats. And then the rest of the world, represented by Bob Burdick, holding a flag. I think my, some of you may have seen us posted. There were only four of us there from the right. U.S. And then there were some Aussies and some Canadians. Yeah, but it was really cool that we got to be the rest of the world with Bob Burdick. So we had this great fun entrance. So a couple things, though, that I did want to share with you that really impressed me, of course, continues to be the social media. Um, they are still putting out national marketing directors in less than a year. I talked to the newest gal from Finland. She did it in five months. Um, I sat what I love also is they do a VIP room for all of the NMDs and above at the conference. There's actually a separate room for them to gather in. And yes, you feel important, but the better thing about that was you could go around and talk to people. And so I saw some of the people holding their Oscar, their like Oscars, their awards for certain club levels. And I went and I talked to them. I said, you know, tell me a little bit about how you got there. And I will give you just one example that I think represented many. She was a young woman of about 24, 25 years old. She was a national, new, brand new national marketing director. She might have been a 12 or 24 club. I know she was at least a 12 club. I don't know if she was a 24 club. But I asked her how she built her business. And she said, completely on social media. And I said, so are any of your teammates, friends of yours, or people you know? And her answer was no. Her entire team consisted 
of people that she didn't know. Now, I'm not saying that that's what we should do um, because they are still encouraging clearly to be talking. She said a lot of her customers and family members were on Juice Plus. Um, a lot, most of her friends were on Juice Plus that she already knew and her family was on Juice Plus, but none of them specifically became distributors. Her distributors came mostly from social media. And the, the way that they, she was doing it is that she, and they taught, a couple different people talked about this from the stage, which was, you know, branding yourself. Really asking yourself the questions, who am I? Who's my tribe? Who would I be most likely to attract by what I post on my personal timeline? And so what she specifically did, well, I said, well, how did you find the people that came on board for you? Did you reach out to them? Did you message them in some way? Did you, he said, what she did was, you know, on the top of the toolbar on, on your um, Facebook page, you know, you can type in moms that live in Hastings or people that raise chickens that live in, Jacksonville or people that love bunnies or whatever that will come up on Facebook and if those are your tribe those are the people that you want to get in contact with and so what she did is she found all the people that had similarities to her and she asked them if they would be friends with her on Facebook just you know she just said how you do will you be my friend or however it's actually friend request, friend request. thank you oh Mr. Tech <laughs> woohoo friend request. And then I said, well, then did you start texting them? She goes, oh, no, I didn't text any of them. What I did was I went to all of those sites and I saw things that I liked on their pages and I simply liked them. I didn't make comments and I didn't reach out to them. I simply liked their posts. She said, the more you like somebody's post, if you're already friends with them, the more what you post will show up on their news feed because Facebook assumes that you're really good friends and wants to keep you tied together. So she consistently wow. liked them and then they reached out to her because of her posts. They came onto her site and said, asked her questions, what is it that you do? What is it that you took, take that makes you feel so healthy? I see the activities that you're doing, tell me more. So all of the people that she actually got on her team actually out to her because she created a Facebook page or personal timeline that people that she was uh, most like would like and they'd want to know more about what she was doing. So that was the really big thing that I learned. Um, and then, you know, branding yourself with an idea. Um, a lot of them had names like you know, the Mommy's Fitness Club or female fitness company, or go girl mama, or um, moms for health and wealth. They all kind of have their taglines for what might attract people. Um, and I'm hearing a little bit of dog barking in the background, so if you've got a dog in your neighborhood, or um, you've got kids in the background, would you make sure to put your, um, Oh, no. Your phone or your chat on mute. Like I just muted out Linda Fuller. Um, so just please make sure that you're on mute. So anyway, those were some of the things that I picked up. One more thing that was really important that I heard from everyone, like everyone, is how important team involvement is on your Facebook pages. And when people break off into smaller team pages, they don't have the big involvement. So for your team pages, you really kind of wanted to wait, I got the impression, till you're at least an NMD to create a team page, but that your responsibility as a, as a distributor is to be active on your team pages. That's what they said over and over and over again. What has made them successful on their teams is having lots of participation on their team pages. People posting, um, whatever, posting what's going on in their life, I mean, posting what's going on in their business, asking questions on their Facebook page. And this, of course, would be true of Boxer as well. The more interaction the team had, the better the team did all around. So I want to, and, and they really made a big deal about it's your responsibility to interact if you're going to be, um, build a big business. Even your own business, it's your responsibility to interact on your team page. So um, 
I think that's kind of all I wanted to say for now. And, and to ask yourself, that was the other question. Ask yourself how you can not only add value, obviously, to your customers, which Chris is going to talk a little bit about their customer care, but when we think about how we add value to others' lives, how can you add value to your team's page or Voxer group? Think about how you can add value to it. Because not only, I think Michael um, Brown said it really great today when he said it's really a great place to ask questions on Voxer because it allows everybody to hear the answer. When you ask it individually, nobody else gets to hear the answer. So we really work best if we really add value to each other's lives through our pages and our Voxers. So I'm going to turn this over to you, Chris. Okay, I just want to add a little bit, uh, uh, kind of echo what Nikki has already said, that really the first half day, which was they, their conference starts Friday afternoon and ends Saturday night with a pretty wild party. Um, and of course, the 39 Club dinner was, you know, just at a castle. In a castle! <laughs> it, was, it was good. Um, but that person after person after person talking about social media said they, they get so proficient at it and acquiring so many relationships that they just pick and choose the people that contact back to them, as Nikki said. So um, it, it's creating that, the numbers create the momentum, I think was a great message that we got. So what I wanted to talk about, first of all, um, we hope you all have, sometime have an opportunity to go to, uh, to a conference in, in another country. We, uh, quite honestly, we had so much fun in Ireland it was a little bit intense driving, you know, driving a small car, competing with tour buses on, <laughs> on one-way roads. Oh, tell about our oh. getting to the ferry. No, I, mean, I, oh, like, you gotta, I would just share one story. Is that, you know, I was trying to, we were trying to see a lot. We feel that we left no stone unturned, including the Blarney Stone. But um, we, uh, so I was driving kind of fast to, to get to another tourist area, so to speak. And I went by this big orange sign, and, and Nikki said, I think that sign said the road is closed. I said, really? Oh, I don't think so, you know. The sign was as big as a house. <laughs> <laughs> but I was going fast, so I didn't see it. Anyway, long story short, we went about 20 minutes. We were about five minutes from this ferry that we were trying to catch. We figured, and sure enough, the road was closed. And uh, luckily, Nikki had her GPS on her phone. We got onto something that looked more like a donkey trail than a, than a road. I mean, there was grass down the middle. If there had been another car coming, we don't know what we've done. But, um, you know, turn left here, turn right here. I mean, we were out in the country, and all of a sudden, right at the last second, came back onto the highway, pulled into the ferry station. We was going to stop for coffee, and then I said, well, it looks like it's almost 4 o'clock. We pulled onto the ferry, they shut the gate behind us, and away we went. It was pretty amazing. But So much of our trip turned out exquisitely better than we ever could have planned. I just have to say that. And it happened over and over and over again. It was awesome. Right, okay. Keep moving okay, keep moving. So, But it was fascinating, really, at the end of the Irish trip, we were tired. And we thought, oh, man, now we're going to do Hastings. And then after Hastings, we were really tired. And we got to conference. And uh, it was unbelievable the energy that conference gave us. And you might picture you know, a, a 12 hour flight home and think that we might be coming home kind of like, oh my gosh, now we got to go to work. That's not the case. Ending, con ending the vacation with a conference fired us up. So, uh, yes, it was a long flight yesterday, but we came back just inspired and ready to rock, rock and roll. And how exciting it's gonna be for all of us to be rock and rolling right into the next conference. So, uh, four things I wanted to talk about that came through over there. One was customer care. Same, same priority we have here. Uh, they made it very clear, even though they're getting customers and using a lot of social media, it's much easier, number one, to keep a customer than it is to get a customer. And I love this quote, Take care of those you want to keep in your life. Yeah, that take, was, you know, say it again, it was a good one. Take care of those you want to keep in your life. And, you All know, right? they've really learned the hard way about customer care because they, oh, good. <laughs> so, uh, 
John Holloway he talked about the five R's. It starts with a relationship, then goes to results because they get on the product or they start the business. Creates raving fans. Raving fans create referrals and referrals re create recruits. So the five R's, relationship, results, fans, referrals, and results. All right, the other thing I want to talk about is, is the mindset. And this is what Nikki was just about to refer to. They have created their own unique set of challenges over there. And part of that is because of social media. It, it's really inundated in a sense. Now, their market, uh, what do you call it? Market. Their, um, how far they've gone into the market. Somebody will give me that word in a second. Penetration, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> the market penetration yeah. is, is about like ours, you know, uh, one to two percent of the population. But here's a story. We were we made this decision. We need to be more intentional because if we're going to be two weeks in Ireland, why not come away with a team there? Right. So we started talking to more people and we were, we we're at a pub listening to great Irish music and um, started a conversation with some great gentlemen. One was a tour bus driver who was really talking to Nikki and giving her great ideas of stuff we couldn't miss. And the other man was a, a private tour driver, private car, and um, <clears throat> spoke with him and found out his wife couldn't work because she'd injured her back. She was a nurse. And so I said, you know, I don't know if this would be for you uh, or that this was something she'd be interested in. But this whole lifestyle we have has been created by this incredible product. And uh, we're looking for teammates. And he was he was leaning in. He was leaning in. He was very excited. And he said, "Really, what's what's the name of the product, lad?" And I said, "Well, it's called Juice Plus." And he went back, and his eyes rolled back in his head, and he was like, "No, no, no." And, and we ran into that a lot because, uh, unfortunately, people are they're not so adept at being tactful about asking enough questions. There's a lot of Juice Plus presence on social media and a lot of people jamming it down other people's throats. In fact, this guy's brother's wife was an NMD in Ireland. I mean, it was so funny. We're sitting at this little bar in Kinsale, have this whole conversation. He's leaning in, leaning in, so excited. And the minute Chris just Juice Plus, man, it's like he backs up. And I said, well, how'd you hear about it? He goes, well, my, my brother's wife is a, is a black and such and such. And I figured out she was an NMD. I looked her up. And um, so her and I started talking. But she had basically said to this woman, you have to get on Juice Plus. You're overweight. You have to do this. And it just turned them off so much because they didn't ask for permission. You know, would you, if, would you be open kind of so, thing. So our distributors that are over there are running into the same challenge. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of people that have heard about Juice Plus, but here's what happened with the group of 40 people that came to our event. Almost all of them stayed, and they were very intrigued, and they wanted to hear more because whether they're being force-fed it or whatever, it's the same situation we have here. The only reason people don't get on Juice Plus is because they don't know what they don't know. When we were tactful, when we talked about the mission to inspire healthy living around the world, and we brought it back, brought it in less intimidating, everybody was interested. We met with uh, some of Heidi's guests uh, two or three different times, and all of them had heard of Juice Plus. And we're like this. Yeah, they were resistant. They came to support Heidi, and then they got the information, and they're becoming customers and becoming distributors. The point is, they have their own challenges. We have some of our own challenges here. But if, if you understand that the only reason people don't take Juice Plus is because they don't know what they don't know, and find out what it's going to take for them to be able to hear you. So, um, you know, one of the big challenges I think we have is that most people will tell you, I don't want to be a salesperson. Okay. And, and what we also heard from the, over there, same thing. If you don't want to be a salesperson, don't be a salesperson. Connect to the message, which is inspiring healthy living around the world, and get out and, and find out what it takes. Okay, you have a story. What do you know about Juice Plus? You know, let's find out what the challenges really are. Okay, yeah. 
So the last two things I want to talk about, number one is the vision for the company. And uh, <clears throat> the two top leaders, uh, Dan Holtzman, who is, is the is chief of all of uh, Europe um, and the Middle East, and uh, his uh, sidekick, Sven Google. Google. I can't, I can't yeah. say it's German. Anyway. German. They, they just came out on stage with a couple of high chairs like Jay used to do, and they said, you know, after the Barcelona conference, which I attended, uh, that, was la that was the last big European conference. Now they're doing smaller in-country ones. This was the UK. Germany has their own. Italy has their own. And, and people still come from all the different countries, but it's not like it was. They, they sat down and they said, where do we want to be in 2020? All right, so this was 2013, and they shared the vision of the goals that they set, and it just represents the same as the U.S., the, the forward thinking, the long-term thinking to have a stable and lasting company. So they set the goals for 2020, and they've hit them all already. So they're setting new goals for 2020. One of those goals is they're going to invest $20 million in the upgrade of their technology systems. We've been a leader in e-commerce, electronic commerce, right? There's a whole new commerce in the future. It's called F-commerce. It's, it's Facebook. It's, it's um, doing it all through social media. So needless to say, social media is not going to go away, right? You know, I was one of those holdouts. I was waiting for the personal computer to disappear, but it, it seems like it's going to stick around. So uh, I think that's going to be the same with social media. But probably ought to get on that bandwagon and, and just, you know, let's all just get better at it. Um, they are now the fat. We are the fastest growing direct selling company in Europe, but their goal is not just to be the fastest going to be the number one. In, in all of Europe, and I, I think in 2020. By the way, they are opening Dubai this January, and their big international conference, uh, they'll go back to that, that will be in Dubai in 2020. And uh, Nikki and I would like you all to uh, do your best over the next three or four years so that uh, we can rent an airplane and uh, we can all go together. If you buy into that, let's hit it, all right? You know, one of the things, exactly, one of the things is um, asking everybody you know, do you know anybody in Dubai? Do you know anybody in Germany? Do you know anybody wherever? It really isn't that hard to start to develop an international business. And, of course, you always want to start at home. Even they talked about starting at home. Yeah. But it, it, it's pretty exciting to be involved in an international business. And we've been doing this for 26 years. And it's the first time I have been, Chris did a couple of years ago, to Barcelona, but actually to go to a conference not in your country that you have team members in. I can't even tell you how exciting it is. Okay, we got to wrap this up. Uh, you can do but, this stuff. Yeah, but just uh, to, to reiterate what she's saying, go across the street before you go across the town, go across the town before you go across the country, go across the country before you go across the pond. But you can still reach out and find out who you know and who might want to do that. Sometimes you have a, t a, a team in... UK, Spain, wherever it might be, there's not much you can do for them. So they kind of make it on their own. All right. So that's good to know. All right. So finally, the unlimited potential really was coming out. John Holowaty gave a very heartfelt presentation, as did our own Lauren Slocum. Mm -hmm. uh, they really knocked it out of the park. And here's some of the things that, that was said. Instead of asking yourself, how long will this take? Ask yourself, how far do you want to take it? Okay. I mean, th this can create anything you want. We know it's happening. Uh, it was very obvious over there, but it's happening here too. So just know that one of the things you don't want to be saying in the future is, uh, what, what could I have achieved? All right, what could I have done? This is an opportunity. One of the speakers pointed out that uh, opportunities aren't missed. They're just taken by others, all right? So this is an opportunity for all of us on this call to not only create the lifestyle that we want to create, that you want to create, but to reach out and touch lives and let them create the lifestyle through better health and through inspiring healthy living. <laughs> the message. 
Uh, it's an opportunity to make a big difference. Um, there's one. Don't forget that one. Yeah. Such a good one. And uh, <clears throat> so also they had a legends panel. It was, it was pretty impressive. Bob Burke sat on it. Yeah, the legends panel, by the way, was they had five or six people up there that had been in the business forever. And they gave them each two or three minutes to answer specific questions. It was, really, it was phenomenal. It was a great part of the of the uh, the guy that talked about the most important thing that you can do at the Barcelona conference. Who was from Italy? He, his one word when he gave when they asked him for advice, his answer was face the book. Face the book. Face the book. <laughs> those of you that don't speak, speak Italian, it's Facebook. Okay. So I'm going to end with this. The, and this is also a quote from the conference that winners or losers are not born what is born is choosers you get to choose what this is going to be for you so i say grab the gift uh share it with others ride the wave and uh we'll see you in st louis <laughs> good night everybody have a great week love you all good night you guys Night. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Nikki. Good night, everybody. Night. Good night.